Hey guys, it's Brother Chris. I hope you're having a wonderful Sunday. Last Sunday, we made dragon masks. Now, Sister Brittany did not like my dragon mask, but I thought it was awesome. So this week, I made another one. And I'll show that to you later. But this week, we want you to draw us a picture of your dragon. And we want you to use crayons and color pencils and pencils and whatever you want to use. And parents, for, for the little ones, we have a coloring page that we're uploading to the Facebook page. And we want to see those too. So download that coloring page and, and, and also draw us your dragon. Color it in and make it look great because we're going to show those to everybody next week. But from last week, we want to show you some of the dragon masks that got sent to us. So here are those dragon masks. Hey guys, those are some great dragon masks, but I think this one wins. I told you I had an awesome dragon mask. I hope you guys had fun with that. This next thing we're gonna do, we're going to worship the Lord. So kids, I want you to stand up Turn the volume up, and I want you to dance with the song and praise the Lord. And after that, we're going to get into our lesson.
So I hope you guys have had fun today. Now we're going to go ahead and get started on our lesson. And today we're going to learn emotions. And the emotion we're going to talk today about is fear. Now fear is something that everyone feels. But we're going to learn that how to overcome that fear. But first I want to tell you a story about a young boy named Hiccup. Hiccup, and you may have seen him in a movie, and you may have read about him in a book, but Hiccup overcame his fear. You see, Hiccup was a Viking, and Vikings were deathly afraid of dragons. Dragons are huge. Dragons are strong. And dragons are so destructive. And in the story, his, his family were all Vikings and they were just so afraid of them. They had lived in fear of dragons their whole lives. And Hiccup was just a regular boy. Nothing special about him. He wasn't the fastest. He wasn't the strongest. And he really wasn't the smartest. But Hiccup learned how to overcome his fear. And Hiccup learned to train his dragon. Now Hiccup's, Hiccup's dragon's name was Toothless. We, we, we can see that in the movie. And, and he trains Toothless to do certain things and he helps Toothless. And these two unlikely adversaries become allies. The dragon and Hiccup became friends. And Hiccup learned how to teach him how to do things. And then he taught other Vikings that they had nothing to be afraid of. And he taught them how to train their dragons. One thing we know about Hiccup is he had to be brave. When we face our fears, we have to be brave. But like I said, he wasn't the biggest Viking. He wasn't the strongest or the smartest or the best looking. He was just a normal kid, a normal Viking. In the same way that Hiccup had something inside of him, we have something inside of us. God made us special. God made us the way we are. God made us unique. There are things that we can do that we don't even know we can do. But if we trust in God, we don't have anything to fear. I have good news. Whatever your fear is, you can overcome it. And all you need to remember is, we have a God who is in control. In Luke chapter 8, verse 22 through 25, the Bible says, Now it came to pass on a certain day that he went into a ship with his disciples and he said unto them, Let us go over unto the other side of the lake. And they launched forth. But as they sailed, he fell asleep. And there came, a, came down a storm of winds on the lake. And they were filled with water and were in jeopardy. And they came to him and awoke him and saying, Master, Master, we perish. Then he arose and rebuked the wind and the raging water. And they ceased, and there was a calm. And he said unto them, Where is your faith? And they, being afraid, wondered, saying to one another, What manner of man is this? For he commandeth even the winds and the water, and they obey him. Isn't that awesome? Isn't it awesome to know that God is in control? These disciples were afraid. And they had been with Jesus for a good amount of time. They knew God was in control. But all they could see was the winds and the waves. But this had to be a bad storm. Because most of the disciples were fishermen, and they were used to being in the boat. They were used to being on the waves. They were used to seeing storms. So this had to be a bad storm. 
So, but when they got scared, all the disciples ran to Jesus and said, Jesus, we're going to die if you don't get up and help us. So Jesus gets up and with a word, Jesus calmed the storm. He showed them that he was in control and they had no reason to fear. He showed them who he was. He showed them that he was God because they said, what manner of man is this? Well, it was God. See, only God can control the wind and only God can control the waves. God is the one who's in control. God is all powerful. And Jesus tells the storm to stop and it has to stop. So they had nothing to fear. And sometimes in our lives, we go through storms. And not just storms as in weather, and those can be scary. Not just storms as in wind and lightning and rain and hail and waves. Sometimes storms can be different. Sometimes we can have problems in our family, and that can be scary. Sometimes we can have deaths in our family, and that can be scary. Sometimes we can get in accidents, and sometimes bad things can happen, and it can really scare us. But when we're afraid, all we need to remember is that God is in control. All we need to think about is how big my God is. See, the disciples had the answer in the boat the whole time. But the one thing that they focused on was the storm. The one thing they focused on was all the things going on around them. They didn't focus on who they had in the boat. They focused on the waves. They focused on the winds. They focused on the rain. And... They focused on the scary stuff. But we know that God was there. And we know that God is with us. Now fear isn't, isn't always a bad thing. Sometimes it's good to, to have fear of some things. You know, I, I'm, I don't like snakes. I've got a fear of snakes. And if it's a poisonous snake... That fear can save my life. Sometimes we have to have fear for things, and sometimes you can take that word fear and replace it with respect. Sometimes we need to stay away from dangerous things to keep us safe. And we should be cautious around things that can hurt us, like a hot stove or a wild animal. A cause for concern can make us strap on a helmet whenever we're riding a bicycle. Because that's, that's a good fear to have. No one likes to fall off their bicycle. Or when we buckle our, our seat belts in the car. We do that because we respect the things that can happen that can hurt us. So that's a good fear to have. But God doesn't want us to have fear that keeps us from doing things. He wants us to He wants us to, to go ahead and trust in Him. When He wants us to go meet a friend or when He wants us to go tell someone that Jesus loves you. God wants us to remember how He calmed the storm. He wants us to remember how He is the God of creation. He created the earth. He created the wind. He created those waves. And He created the situation that you're in, in your life. So God is in control. God wants us to, to go out and do things. God wants us to go make new friends. And, and fear can keep us from doing that. Sometimes we, we're afraid, will they like me? Or will they accept me? And that should never keep us from talking to someone or, or making a friend. 
because God loves us the way we are and everyone else should too. So we don't need to be afraid of that. We just need to remember God is in control. There's no reason to fear when God is in control. And the Bible says, if God be for me, then who can be against me? So when you get afraid, when you get scared, just remember, God is in control. Just remember, I believe in God. And God created everything. And God is, is all-powerful. And God is in control. He calmed the storm for the disciples. And he'll calm your fears too. Just remember, God is in control. Now, if you could, close your eyes with me and bow your heads, and we're going to say a quick prayer. God, we love you. We thank you for everything you do for us. God, and we thank you that we know that you are in control. God, take away our fears and help us grow strong in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Guys, I hope you had a great time today. So just remember, next Sunday at 1015, we'll be coming back with another video. And we'll be teaching you how to train your emotions. So come back and see us next week, okay? See you later, guys.
everyone. We're glad to, uh, to be with you this morning. We want to welcome you to our live stream service this precious Sunday morning on April 26, 2020. We're so very glad that you are able to be with us. Praise God. We've come to gather together what we can together and just have the church. Praise God and praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Aren't you glad today that you can be a part of this? We say to our church family this morning, welcome to you and welcome to anyone who is watching who is not part of our church. We're glad that you are here. We're grateful that God is in this place today. Hallelujah. We want to experience the Lord together. And the way that we do that, we lift our praise unto Him. Hallelujah. Would you worship the Lord with us in song as we sing Praise the Lord together. God bless you. Worship with us. situation we're in. Hallelujah. He's still God. He's still on the throne. And He's still in control. Praise God. If you know that, why don't you lift up some praise unto Him today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. 
Amen. Amen. Glory to the Lord. Hallelujah. You know that God is still in the business, praise God, of saving people. He's still in the business of taking care of His own. And hallelujah, He's still in the business, praise God, of controlling this world. So we have nothing to worry about. Hallelujah. And we encourage that if you don't know the Lord for yourself, that you might take an opportunity today to let this service bless you. Let the presence of the Lord come through that uh, medium that you're looking into right now and just bless your soul. Hallelujah. For He's still the soul blesser. He is still the one, hallelujah, that we look to for all our needs today. Praise God. We're going to take and go to the Lord in prayer this morning. We're so grateful once again to have you with us. And we're hopeful that you will be blessed, hallelujah, today by the Lord's presence in your midst. Hallelujah. If you have a special request today, would you type into your uh, phone or whatever you're watching on today and share that with other people of like a minded faith that can help you pray for those needs. Today, praise God, we just know that God is able to do everything that we ask Him to do. If He is in the willingness to do it, praise God. And if we'll just pray His word over the things that we're asking Him to do, He will do it. I believe that with all my heart. I, why do I say that? Because I know God is still the healer. God is still the provider. God is still the protector of us. And I know that God loves us. Praise God. And He loves you very much. And today, if you have that need, praise God, in your heart, would you just let the Lord uh, know that today? And join with us, praise God, in lifting up a heart of just appreciation for what the Lord has done to pay our debt, praise God. We couldn't pay it, hallelujah. But God came in a particular time in human history to pay that debt for all of us, and I'm so very glad that I belong to Him today, and you ought to be too, praise God, hallelujah. Let's go to the Lord in prayer ask for his help today would you uh, just in reverence to the Lord please bow your head even at home today and let's just talk to the Lord for a few moments Lord Jesus we love you so much God we're so very grateful for your presence in this place and in the homes and the hearts of our precious saints of God who cannot be with us today but only in spirit praise God and through the viewing that they're doing today to watch this, I just pray today, God, that you'll go forth from this prayer, Lord, and bless your people. Help us today, God. Meet the uh, needs of your children, God. Uh, answer the prayers, Lord, as only you can do. We love you for it, Lord. We praise you and we put our faith in you. No matter what happens on this, in this world, whatever man does, that's all immaterial. Praise God. For we look to you. The Savior of our souls, our precious King, and our God. We love you today. Amen. Would you once again, hallelujah, sing with us just to honor and give the Lord some praise. Amen. Worship with us.
Son of God and man, you are high and lifted up, and all the world will praise your great name. Your great name. You are Jesus. thing that the Lord did what he did for all of us you know God is the creator of everything that there is praise God there is nothing that was made that was not made by him and it was all done for his good pleasure and purpose praise God but do you know that the Lord hallelujah even though that he created man he he wasn't sure of what it was like to experience humanity that's why he stepped into a flesh suit That's why he stepped into the body of Christ Jesus. That's why the virgin gave birth to the Savior of the world. Now he knows what it's like after living and walking on this earth to know what it is like to hurt, to, uh, praise God, be hungry, to have to sleep, and all those things. He is identified with all of us. And he did every bit of that for our benefit. Praise God. Hallelujah. And he done it out of his grace and his mercy and his great goodness. If I can tell you any one thing that I know about God today, God is good. He is extremely good to all of us. May the Lord bless you today. We bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. Why don't you just, hallelujah, get interactive with us today and worship Him with all that's in you today. God bless you.
in spite of ourselves, in spite of the things that come against us. He always wants to encourage us, uh, hallelujah, and let us know that we are loved. That's why He pours out blessing upon us, hallelujah. And I'm so very glad to be one that is accepted in His beloved today. Would you say amen at home? Would you clap your hands once again and just give God some good praise today? Hallelujah. Amen. 
I want to encourage you with these words today. I just want to encourage you today to know this one thing, and one thing I know that is very sure, and that, praise God, it's going to happen. It's not been as long as it has been. Praise God, we're going to be together once again in this house. Hallelujah. I just felt that in the Holy Ghost a while ago. And I just tell you today, praise God, uh, just be encouraged by that today. Because we love you and we want to see you back with us, praise God, before long. And this all is going to be put in the past as a memory. And praise God, Pastor Carver is going to come and greet you today. Hallelujah. Would you welcome him today and praise the Lord, everyone. Thank you, Brother Campbell. Amen. And praise the Lord to all the saints of the Most High God. Amen. What an honor that it is to be gathered together in the manner we are to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. This is the day that the Lord hath made. Amen. This is the day that the Lord hath made, and I will rejoice and be glad in it. We trust and we hope that you have set aside time, as is our custom, that you're not doing other things right now, that you're not doing dishes and trying to listen to the service, or you're not distracted by this or by that, but that you are fully engaged in the worship of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords today. How many loves Him today? Do you love Him out there? Amen. If you're thankful for the Lord today, if you're thankful for what you feel, why don't you give God one more hand clap of praise even at home. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. We're gathered together today excited about this day. First of all, we want to remind you it is offering time at the sanctuary. It is offering time, time to give unto the Lord who has given so very much to us. We want to remind you uh, once again today, you have four ways that you can give and support the work of the Lord. That you can render the Lord's tithe and your offering to Him by one of four ways. Obviously, you can drop this off in person here at the church. If you want to drop that off today, we will be here for about an hour after service closes today. If you want to swing that by the church, you are more than ha- we're more than happy to receive that today. Thank you for that. If you want to drop it off during the week, there's someone here during today. Uh, all week long, and you're more than welcome to come by and do that. You can also send it in the mail if uh, you need to. The Sanctuary, 210 Luther Street, Greenville, Tennessee, 37745. If you need to send that by way of mail. We have two ways online or electronically that you can give. You can give online at our website, sanctuarytn.org, sanctuarytn for Tennessee.org, and uh, click on the online giving tab, and it'll instruct you if you've not done it before how to set up an online giving account and uh, makes it easier every time you come back to do that if you so choose you can also text the word give g-i-v-e to 423-250-2572 all of that is on your screen so you can see and uh, be a part of our uh, giving options today i don't want to miss a blessing to you and how many of you believe that the lord loveth a cheerful giver Amen. He loves a cheerful giver. We want to say thank you to all of our wonderful church family, all of you precious folks that are continuing to support the work of the Lord. We're thankful for uh, God's provision. We're thankful that God has blessed you and continue to bless you during this time and that God has uh, also blessed the church during this time. We are thankful for that. Before we uh, move on in our service, just really quickly, uh, it was a failure of mine to get a couple of names up here uh, before we had our prayer earlier in the service, but we do want to make mention of a couple of things, and I'm probably going to rely on some help here, but we want to be in prayer for Brother Lanny Jones. He is uh, very sick today. We want to be in prayer for him that God would touch him. Also want to pray for Sister Tammy Norman, that God would touch her today. She has a need in her body, and we are asking the Lord to touch her and help her and strengthen her during this time. We also want to pray for Brother uh, Doug Backus, one of our own today. Uh, lost his, I believe it is his stepfather, uh, I think this morning, that, that uh, he actually passed uh, into eternity. So we want to be in prayer for Brother Doug, Sister Delenn, and their family, that God would bless them. Am I missing anything urgent? 
forgetting anything. If, if we are, if you've let us know about something and it's slipping my mind, please blame uh, my mind and not my heart right now. I am absolutely sorry for missing that. But we want to bring these needs to the people of God that they can continue to pray, lift up these special needs today. Would somebody say amen? Amen. So thankful to be in the house of the Lord. Thankful to be in the presence of God today. And we say it all the time. We are, the reason we do this is we are not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. Amen. We may not be able to assemble in one place, but we can still be in one mind and one accord. And that's what we're doing is we're gathering in one mind and one accord in many different places but united together as the church of Jesus Christ to worship Him today. Amen. We're going to get right out of the way and bring a special guest to the floor today. We're so honored to have my brother here. Uh, brother Joel Carver has preached here several times before, but we want him to come right now. Uh, he's in right now, and, and the Lord laid this on my heart a couple of weeks ago. Uh, this can be, and he's not going to say this, but I will, this can be a difficult time for everybody. But it can certainly be a difficult time for evangelists. He and I have not talked about this, but I can imagine when you rely on going from church to church, preaching revivals and services, when churches are not having service or are otherwise gone to a different method, it can be a difficult time. I as an evangelist never evangelized through a season like this, but we are uh, honored to have him with us today. We want, to pre we want him to take his liberty, preach the word of the Lord. If during this service the Lord lays it on your heart, we would normally do this at the close of service to allow you an opportunity to give to the guest evangelist that's here. If you choose that you would like to do that, uh, you can do one of the four ways we mentioned before. But if you uh, do that electronically, make sure you make a memo there that that is for our special guest speaker. And we want to be a blessing, an extra blessing to our guest evangelist today if we possibly can. But we want him to come right now. And preach the word of the Lord to us, to you at home, wherever you are. Would you put your hands together and welcome to this pulpit, my brother, Brother Joel Carver. Right. Well, praise the Lord, everyone. Oh, what an honor it is to be in the presence of the Lord. What an honor it is to be in Greenville. A wonderful church that is special to my heart and to the heart of my wife who's uh, watching online, my baby boy and Jenny, hopefully watching online, giving me some support through the airwaves. They, uh, they send your, their greetings to you. They're doing great. My, uh, my 15-month-old baby boy, Evan, growing, getting bigger by the minute, <laughs> eating us out of house and home. He, uh, that the majority of offerings and, and uh, givings that we receive go toward his belly so we we are appreciative to all that the body of Christ has to uh, to bless us with it's so good to be here I love each and every one of you out there watching you know the funny thing is after or the last time I was here and preaching I believe it was October of last year I preached a message by the by the title of home sweet home I don't know if you remember that, any of you that are watching, I preached a message, home sweet home. Little did we know how applicable that would be to the day that we live in, how important it is to make sure that your home is the tabernacle, that your home is set aside as a place of worship and glory to the Almighty God, and not just finding yourself here every Sunday and every Wednesday, whatever the case may be church having church here but making sure you are the church at your home and your family set aside for the purpose and the glory of God and and now we see how important that is because whenever you're suddenly ripped away from your body ripped away from the church body suddenly it becomes very difficult to to get that encouragement to get that that healing sometimes that the body provides and that's the reason you need to be connected invisibly at home to the rest of the body right now. I believe that is essential 
in the day that we live in. Home sweet home. So I know I can see it in my mind's eye right now. People sitting around the kitchen table with a cup of coffee watching this service. Sitting maybe in their living room with the image up on a, a bigger screen. That's, that's fine. But what you need to do is, is maybe set down the coffee occasionally and let your voice say amen. And let your hands begin to clap and let your hands begin to raise in in agreement to what's going on here, but also in agreement with the witness. The witness that is our Holy Spirit. He is our witness that will confirm all things to us if we would just open up our mind, or open up our mouths and agree with Him. He will confirm. And I, I appreciate that. As I was driving down today, I was driving down to Greenville from Johnson City. The Lord spoke to me, I believe, and He said that the church needs to get ready. The body of Christ needs to get ready for Him to speak like He's never spoken before. You understand what that means? That means that that voice of God that may have been cloudy, may have been hazy, may have been uh, it's difficult to hear in times past. There is coming a time in the very near future as everything starts to rise up around us, as everything starts to become more difficult within government and within our society around us, the Spirit of the Lord would confirm to you that He is going to speak more clearly to you than He ever has. I believe that. I believe in your spirit right now you feel that confirmation. There is going to be dreams. There is going to be visions. There is going to be a, a voice within you. Rise up that is the voice of God that's going to challenge you and take you to a new place and to do new things that you've never done before, that maybe you were hesitant to do before, maybe you were a little self-conscious to do before, maybe you were a little scared, but now God's saying it's, it's time to shake off that just a little bit and respond to the voice of the Lord that is going to be, be more clear than it ever has in your life and in your world to do what He's called you to do. Laying hands on the sick. Speaking a word of encouragement in Walmart as you're walking down and you don't even know the person that you just, you just walked by, but the Spirit of the Lord will unction you and speak to you about that. That's what I believe. I don't know about you, but I believe that the Spirit of the Lord wants to do that in the day that we live in because people are hurting like they've never hurt. People are feeling what things that they've never thought before that they would feel. Anxiety is creeping up and the Spirit of the Lord wants to reach through His body to the hurting in in this town, in this community, and He wants to tell you to minister to them. It's going to happen. I believe it. As sure as I'm here today, I believe it is going to happen. And I want to be ready for it. I want to be ready, ready to receive the Word of the Lord. I'm not going to preach very long today. I know, I know how it is whenever I'm on the other side of the camera. I know how it is whenever you're listening, uh, you're, you're listening online. You don't want a long, lengthy sermon. It's your, your, your laundry's piling up. Everything's around you to distract you. So we're just going to talk for a few minutes today. But I want you to receive the word of the Lord today. I give honor to my brother, to the leadership of this church, Brother Campbell, Brother Wagers. Sister Celissa and everyone. Every, I love, love the leadership of this church. And I love this church. There is a parallel between the natural and the spiritual. There is a parallel between the natural and the spiritual. I don't know if you know it or not, but everything that you see in this natural world is not all that there is to life. There is not, that is not all that there is. Just what you see and you feel with your natural senses, that's not all that there is. In fact, that there, there is so much more than that. There is an invisible realm in the Spirit that is just on the other side of our sensory mechanisms. We don't know it often because we're tuned to a dif different frequency. We're tuned slightly to a different frequency, more to, to focus on the natural. Sister, thank you so much. We're tuned to the natural 
frequency and we're tuned to tune in and listen and think and and feel everything that is natural but that's not all there is you need to understand that you need to know that there is a spiritual world that is very real and it is the mirror image of this natural this natural world this this natural world is ruled and governed by natural laws just like the spirit world is ruled and governed by spiritual laws the Lord would try to tell us, I know that's, that's a lot to grasp, to, write, to try to wrap your mind around sometimes, but you, you need to understand the Lord would try to tell us over and over again in Scripture, there is a mirror image. You need to see what's around you and apply it to the Spirit. He would, he would go on sometimes to, to try to compare His Spirit in terms that we can understand to a natural phenomenon that is the wind. He says, the wind bloweth where it listeth. That's, that's, he, he's trying to convey to us that the Spirit of the Lord is like the wind in that it blows where it wants to blow. That is a natural and a spiritual imagery and mirroring that's going. We need to understand the spirit world is mirrored by the natural world. And when you understand that, you begin to understand that things that happen in this world can teach us great truths about the spirit. I was, I was reading, or I was, uh, yeah, I was reading a story some time ago about a pilot, a private pilot who was, who was flying a little single engine aircraft. And as he's flying around over the the great landscape below, he begins to just look down and marvel at the beauty that is below. And he spots something on the ground that catches his eye and it excites him. And he says, well, that's very interesting. So he decides to go into a turn just so he can stare at it. For, and that's the freedom and the liberty that you have as you're flying that you, you can just kind of circle things for a while in the air and just stare at that wonderful beauty that is below. And, and as he begins to turn, as he's cruising along, nothing else in the atmosphere, nothing else around that, that would hinder him from doing this, he begins to turn and he begins to stare at the, the thing that caught his eye on the ground. And as he's staring at it, he, he thinks about how great and how majestic and how beautiful this is and the wonders of, uh, of creation and how, how beautiful it is. And then suddenly he, he realizes, I need to pay attention right now. I, I need to pay attention. This is not a time for necessarily sightseeing and daydreaming and forgetting my surroundings. So he takes a quick look. He takes a quick look as his senses come back to him and he looks his, at his his, um, his instruments, and he determines that when he was once flying at 5,000 feet, he went into a turn at 5,000 feet, and all of a sudden, after several loops around, staring at what he was staring at, he begins to look at his, his gauges and realizes he's not at 5,000 feet anymore. He's at 1,000 feet, and quickly, quickly, getting closer to the earth. Now what, what, what once was very beautiful and what once was very nice to see suddenly is becoming very jarring because that's starting to get close to me and, 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 and it's, it's, it's starting to scare me a little bit. And he realized he forgot the fundamental rule, one of the fundamental rules of flying in that turning takes energy. Turning takes energy that's a principle in the physical that we need to understand in the spiritual for every single person that is at home right now listening you need to understand that turning takes effort turning takes energy Whenever you're cruising along in whatever frame of mind you're in or whatever place you are in the spirit, you need to understand whenever I turn, whenever I begin to focus, and whenever I begin to think about something else or pursuing something else, it's not enough just to go into a turn. It's not enough just to decide to change your mind and change your course and turn. What you have to do in the process of turning is increase a little bit of effort. 
That's what the pilot forgot to do whenever he was flying around. He forgot as he went into his turn to circle what it was he was looking at. He forgot to nudge up the throttle just a little bit to give himself a little bit more boost so he can maintain his trajectory as he's turning or his speed as he's turning. And you have to understand that. I want you to know you have to understand that about the Spirit. You have to understand that whenever you decide, especially right now, especially right now in the time that we're living in. There's people all over. There's people all over the world and the country right now saying, maybe I need to turn back to this Jesus. Maybe I need to turn to God. I've never known Him before. Maybe I need to focus on Him again because I don't know what's going to happen. I challenge you right now you need to understand if you're going to make that decision don't just make a turn without increasing a little effort without increasing a little output you gotta punch that throttle just a little bit and give it something more than what you're currently giving turning takes energy turning takes energy effort whenever you want to pursue the things of God whenever you want to pursue the mind of God whenever you want to pursue something maybe in ministry that God has has spoken into your spirit years ago you don't need to just leave it on cruise control as soon as you start to turn toward that you need to make sure that you start to increase effort increase output increase energy within yourself increase focus and that means if you're if God's called you to preach what you need to do is start focusing on and increasing energy to preach if God is calling you to teach a Sunday school class what you have to do is start increasing that energy output pouring into you increasing that effort to develop what it is you want to do And I challenge you, I want to challenge each and every one of you today who maybe you've been far from God for a long time. I know, I know what it's like to be far from God. I know what it's like to be far from God, to be far from the church. But at the same time, the Spirit of God is still nudging you and speaking to you saying, if you would just heed my call and turn to me, what He's saying is if you would just turn back to me and increase a little effort and output, what would happen to you is this thing for living for God would become so much more easier than it is whenever you're just struggling You're trying to live for God, but you're also trying to do other things. God is saying if you would just increase your effort and your energy and your output, it would become so much easier. Increase that energy. Increase that output so that the things for God would become so much easier. The Bible says that His yoke is easy. It's light. His burden is light. He doesn't want it to be difficult, but we make it so much more difficult than than it needs to be because so many times, just like that pilot, we forget to to give a little bit more energy and effort. We want to maintain status quo as we're going through our turn and through our motions. There's something within the human body, within the human condition that is called homeostasis. It's a place where the body wants to make all things equal. Every input, every output, all things balanced and equal. you got to fight that with everything within you because we are a fallen, we are a fallen humanity. You have to fight that homeostasis that wants everything to be equal on an even playing ground. And you've got to increase effort and over ride that I know that you're hearing me at home right now I know that you're understanding what I'm saying whenever I say that you have to increase your energy you have to increase your effort a course correction takes effort it does I'm sorry, I'm, I apologize if, if, it, if it's contrary to your understanding of mainstream Christianity, but a course correction, a correction takes effort on your part. It is not something that comes easy within yourself. Sure, the grace of God is wonderful, but don't misunderstand the grace 
of God with the mercy of God. The grace of God is not the mercy of God. The mercy of God is not the grace of God. The grace of God isn't some magical stuff that comes upon you that is a, 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 like we think it's a mercy type of situation. It's not that at all. Grace of God is the supernatural power of God to do what we can't do ourselves. To approach Him in ways that we never could. But it requires, it requires an increase of effort on our part. An increase of energy. You have to pursue. You have to give of yourself in the day. Especially in this day. I don't know if you know it or not, but all of the things going on in the world today is very, very, very humbling, very sobering, as it, as it were. You know, whenever I was a kid, growing up in Pentecost and growing up around prophecy, and I never imagined all of the prophecy that I heard. I never, there was always something within me that said, yeah, that's interesting, but there's no way that could happen. There's no way. I mean, I could, whenever I was a kid, even into my young adult life, there's no way that I could see all of the end time prophecy scenarios playing out. But, how many know that it's a different story today? How quickly... How quickly the most advanced civilization in the history of mankind can come to a crashing end. Can come to a crashing halt. How quickly, just with the signing of a document, with the wave of a pen, as it were, with the wave of a hand, everything that we know in our society can come to a crashing halt. I remember being a kid thinking, how, how could there be no currency. How could there be a, a, a society where there is no currency? And then all of a sudden, in the age of pandemic, we understand that the dollar bills that, that we hold in our pocket are bacteria and virus magnets. That is a cloth that just holds onto. So all they have to do is say, we need to suspend currency just for a few a few months, or and how many knows when the government decides to suspend something for a little while, it's much longer than they ever said originally it was going to be for. So all they have to say is this is a health hazard to use cash. So we need to go to a cashless society. I don't mean to scare you, and I don't mean to get into that realm where we're just scared of everything and go to the hills, And but I want you to know how quickly things can change, how quickly things can move into a place of setting up Everything that we've heard about in time prophecy for years, how quickly. Whenever I was a kid, I didn't think it would ever happen. I didn't think there was any way. But now all of a sudden, I see how it can happen with technology. And you're viewing me by technology that was unimaginable just a few short years ago. We hold in our pockets computers that are vastly more powerful than the computers that sent people to the moon years ago. Powerful. Our world can change in an instant. So what we have to understand, on that note, you have to understand, it's no time to play. It's no time to go into a turn without increasing output and energy. It's no time to mess around. It's no time. That's the plea. That's the call of this preacher in 2020. It is not a time to play around. It's not a time to mess around. Whenever we're turning to God, whenever we're turning to the things of God, increase your energy effort increase your giving increase your prayer life increase your fasting increase your reading increase increase energy energy turning takes effort it's not a cruise control it's not a cruise through the mediterranean whenever i go into turning whenever i go into a turn toward the things of god it's time to punch that up and go Second Peter chapter number one. Second Peter chapter number one, verse number five. This is wonderful, beautiful scripture that many of us are very familiar with. And beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue. With all diligence, with all attention, 
with all energy, with all effort. Add to your faith virtue and to virtue knowledge and to knowledge temperance and to temperance patience and to patience godliness and to godliness brotherly kindness and to brotherly kindness charity. Add. 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 Everybody has been given a measure of faith. No matter where you are in this world, no matter where you are, you have been given a measure of faith. You've, you may have decided to place that, in, that faith in humanism, in new ageism, in other things, but that faith is still there. What, what you need to do is understand that you've got to place that faith back to the, upon the one that gave you that faith. You must place that faith back in the one true God. That measure of faith that is rooted and grounded in you that is put into you from the moment of conception you have to add to that you have to increase energy you have to add to that faith morals that's what the bible is saying here you have to you've got faith everybody's been given a measure of faith but if you would just turn up the notch just a little bit increase that effort just a little bit and add to that some morals some more so, Something that says, okay, there is right and wrong in this, and I'm not going to do this. And I'm just add to your to add to your faith morals. And to your morals, once you get there, once you start adding some morals into your life, understanding that there is right and wrong in this life, you're going to cr- increase it just a little bit. N- kick it up just another notch and add to your morals knowledge. Because if you just have morals, if you just have a sense of right and wrong, but you have no knowledge, suddenly it becomes legalism. Suddenly it becomes an error. But what you need to do after you've got some sort of sense of right and wrong, you need to add to it knowledge. That means you need to read. You need to understand the things of God and the principles of God above all the principles of God. And once you start cruising through knowledge and you start to feel pretty pretty strong, in the spirit I've got a little bit more understanding of the things of God and the principles of God I'm going to turn it up just a little bit more I'm going to increase my output and my energy just a little more and I'm going to add to my knowledge self control oh Jesus help us Oh, Jesus, help us. That's the one. That's the one that I don't want anything to do with. As a good old born and raised southern boy with a whole lot of energy, with a whole lot of rebellion in me, I don't like self-control. But God's saying, you've, you've got a little knowledge now. I need you not to just go into a turn with maintaining your energy output you got to increase it you got to apply it you've got to apply it to your life and realize self-control is what's next and i've got to start practicing self-control and how many knows it takes so much energy and effort to practice self-control because everything within me that wants to do what I want to do says don't practice that every fleeting lustful thought that comes into my mind says don't challenge me don't don't place any energy upon opposing me but that's what we got to do we got to increase our energy output our effort and add to our knowledge self-control and then whenever we start to do that God's saying okay it's time to bump it up in a little bit now and I want your focus and your energy to go into upon your self-control adding to that patience oh Jesus patience the dreaded the dreaded patience well, the Bible says With tribulation comes patience, or the trying of your faith worketh patience. And I don't know that I want all that. Well, God's saying, here's a shortcut right here. If you don't want tribulation to give you patience, why don't you start increasing effort and energy so that you can apply patience to yourself? Because I guarantee you every single day of your life, there is something in your world and in your life that will challenge you to give a little energy and effort to practicing patience. 
Jesus, I know, I know that I need it. I know that I need it because it's the most difficult thing in the world for me sometimes to practice patience. But God's saying, unless you want a great tribulation to come upon you, to give you patience, to force patience upon you, why don't you every single day of your life start increasing a little bit of output and adding to that, adding to that self-control, patience. How many know whenever you start to practice self-control, hand in hand comes patience. Hand in hand. Suddenly, whenever I'm practicing self-control and I'm stopping myself from pursuing every lustful desire that I want, suddenly I'm forced. I feel that come upon me that I'm also increasing the patience within me. And after patience. Oh, that we're not done yet. <laughs> we're not done yet. After patience, we start to turn the knob up just a little bit more. And after patience, we start working toward godliness. Every one that I read in that scripture, it's broken down right here. Remember what Peter said. Add to it with all diligence. And now we're starting to get into the realm of godliness. That's whenever we start walking in some serious, serious turf. That's when we start to walk in areas uh, and we start to understand, I don't know, I'm not supposed to be here. This, this godliness stuff and this holy stuff and this stuff being of God, I don't feel like that I'm worthy to be here. And you start to stare yourself back in the face at that moment and say, I realize the error of my ways. I realize how frail and how fallen I am. And you begin to fall on your face anew all over again, right in the middle of this transition moving toward God. He slaps godliness in your face and you say, I'm not worthy to be godly. But he says, if you would just increase your energy output, if you would just increase your effort toward me, I will make you godly. I will make you godly. And suddenly we start to raise up ourselves as sons and daughters of God, walking in righteousness and godliness, and we add to our godliness kindness. Not talking about that fake smile on your face, that insincere kindness where you look at somebody and say, Hey, I love you, Bo, and you don't love them. Hey, I'm praying for you, Bo. You're not praying for them. That fake kindness that Western society and America and specifically tries to breed in into us how to win friends and influence people, Dale Carnegie stuff. We start exercising that false kindness. And God's saying, nope, true godly kindness comes after godliness. And you got to make an effort to be sincere and kind. Not that Dale Carnegie stuff, how to win friends and influence people. Oh, that's a wonderful book. It should be renamed, how to manipulate people to get what you want. That's the way, that's what it should be renamed. I read that book and it is a wonderful book in the business world. But remember, being fake kind, being fake sincere, being glib is not godly. It is not godly kindness. What we need to do is increase that effort so we get to sincere, true kindness. And then... Suddenly we're not walking around with that glib response to anybody and everybody. And we've got godliness and we, we've got godly kindness. We're finally getting to the end of the road. And I don't say that loosely. I don't say that like it's an easy achievement. But finally, after we get godly kindness, he says, okay, now... It's time to max out your throttle. It's time to turn it up. Full throttle. Everything you've got. And I want you to add to your kindness love. Add to your kindness. That's not glibness. That's not fake. Add to your kindness genuine, godly love. 
When you start to look at your neighbor, when you start to look at your family, when you start to look at the person as you pass them in the aisle six feet away, (laughs) six feet away, you start to look at them through the eyes of a long-suffering father. Genuine, godly love. Times have we looked at each other and said, I love you, I love you. And it's so hollow, so shallow, so fake. How many times have we done that? How many times have we done that? God saying, There's a level whenever you start increasing your effort to me and you're going through this transition and you're going through these phases, you will get to a place of pure, godly love that you've never known before. Never known before. Suddenly, that person that just slapped you in the face, you start looking back at them saying, I think I need to pray for them. I think I need to pray for them. I think I need to pray for their scenario. I think I need to pray for their family. Suddenly the person who talked ill ill about you, that talked trash about you, that did all of these things against you, suddenly that love, that true godly love starts to bubble up within you and you start looking at them through the eyes of a long-suffering father. know how we look at babies today you know we look at babies with such affection but we look at adults with such contempt and complete lack of affection our father our loving father he doesn't see the difference most of the time he continues that long-suffering love and that reaching just like we would reach for a baby He continues that reach all the way into adulthood. They may be dark. They may be full of sin. They may be hateful and bitter. But the godly love that I'm talking about is the godly love that's still reaching. I still see that baby laying in that laying in that crib as a as a small child. I still see that and I'm still reaching. That's what God has to give us. That Godly love. Godly love. But you're saying how? I, I don't know. It's 1207. I'm wrapping up right now, coming to a close. How can I do that? You just went through a laundry list. So exhaustive. So extensive. I don't have the energy to do that. I know some of you are saying that right now. I know some of you are saying that right now who have struggled your entire life to understand the things of God. You may be a prodigal gone away. I don't have the energy. I don't have the energy to do that. I would direct your attention to Isaiah chapter number 40, verse number 29. And he gives power to the weak. And to those who have no might, He increases strength. Even the youths shall faint and be weary. In 2020, during a pandemic, even the youths who can't go to school, who can't do anything but binge watch Marvel movies, non-stop in game, even the youths shall faint and be weary. And the young men shall utterly fall. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. They that wait upon the Lord. I don't want you to think about waiting as in crossing your arms and just sitting down and waiting. What I want you to think about is a waiter. A waiter, a waiter that's coming to the table. I'm not cooking the food. I I only have a limited area of understanding. I only have a limited area that I can work in. But what I can do is I can serve. I'm going to wait upon the Lord. I'm going to wait upon the kingdom of God. I'm going to give 
a little bit of effort just for a moment. And that's what God's asking for. And after you decide to do that, he's going to give you the strength, the energy, the supernatural energy to increase effort as you begin to walk with him or begin to walk with him again. So that's the call. That's the message as we're nearing the end of this time of separateness and apartness. We're nearing the end of our quarantining time. And there's going to come a day very soon where we're going to be able to come back in here. It's going to be a time very soon whenever we're going to be able to go back to stores and, 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 and the whole nine yards. And we're going to be able to pursue fellowship with each other. God's saying, understand, understand, things are changing, and they are changing fast. Walk with me, give me energy and effort, and I will begin to speak to you just as he spoke to me coming down the road to this service. He's going to speak to us in unprecedented ways unprecedented ways. He's only asking for you to increase that energy as you turn. Increase that effort as you turn. Why don't you lift your hands right there where you're at, at your kitchen table, in your living room, wherever you are. Lift your hands and begin to love Him and begin to make a new commitment to Him right now. In the name of Jesus, we pray. In the name of the Most High God, we understand better now than we ever have before that we have to apply ourselves just like a student has to apply their self to their studies. Just like anyone has to p- apply their self to their craft or to their, their work, we have to apply ourselves and increase energy and effort to you and with you. Holy God, love him right now. Love him right now, church, where you are. And I beseech you, I plead with you, prodigals, prodigals, come back, come back. The story of the prodigal son, it's not about the son at all. It's about the father. It's about the father lifting up his, his, his pants, lifting up that robe and running with every ounce of effort to meet you as you make effort to come back to him. The father is willing. Our God, our father wants you. Love him. They're going to begin to sing right now, right there in your homes. Sing with. Praise the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Move, Lord. Move. And we will move toward you. Yeah, you're knocking, but I got to make effort to open. You're not just going to barge in on me. You're knocking, and I'm going to open. I'm thirsty. You're going to give me water to drink, but I have to drink. I have to drink.
going to sing that one more time, but I just want you to lift your hands there at home. Would you worship the Lord right now? Sing this song out to Him. It's a song of complete surrender. Pray this prayer to Him right now. You've heard an incredible word from God. Why don't you just receive from the Lord right now in Jesus' name. Are you thankful for the word from the Lord that you heard today? Why don't you give God some praise even at home right now? Amen for what the Lord has spoken to us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Brother Joel Carver. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We appreciate that word. What a timely word from the Lord. What I believe a not just a word in due season, but a word in due season for this church. For anyone else who was listening today, amen. Receive that word in Jesus' mighty name. Would you say amen? We don't know for sure what the next few days are going to hold based on the announcement that is going to come this week from our governor. We will be making an announcement this week as well in regard to our um, continuing schedule here at the church. We are looking forward to welcoming you back into the house of the Lord just as soon as possible. We anticipate that day to be sooner now than it has been this entire time. We are excited about that. and uh, We'll be letting you know this week uh, just as soon as we know. We'll be making a formal announcement, so be watching for that. I want to remind you once again, uh, Brother Joel, Sister Jenny, and little Evan are traveling full-time with Evangelistic Field, have been for several years now. Uh, they are in Tennessee right now, have been for a few weeks, obviously due to this Safer at Home order and everything that, uh, from state to state that has been instituted. We want to give you an opportunity to be a blessing to this beautiful family, these wonderful folks. They're not just evangelists. They're not just uh, a beautiful family, but they're our beautiful family. They've been a part of our church and certainly minister here from time to time, and we love them and appreciate them. So if you haven't done so yet, I would encourage you to take a moment and uh, consider uh, giving an offering today to this family. We assure you 100% of the funds that come in uh, that are designated to Brother and Sister Carver, uh, Brother Joel and Sister Jenny and their family will be directed to them. So we want you to be assured of that today. If you want to be a blessing to them, we'd encourage you to do so. I mean, those you could not put a price on the word that you have heard today. You could not put a price. You couldn't if, it, if we if we marked it with a sticker. There would be no way to to put a number on that. And we're thankful for what the Lord has spoken to us. Reminding you of our announcements this week. Reminding you of what's going on on our interim schedule. 
this Tuesday is our church-wide day of prayer and fasting. Uh, please be mindful of that. Spend that day, or at least part of that day, in prayer and fasting to the Lord. Amen. For everything that is going on in the world and in the church. Be in prayer also. Uh, join with us at 7 o'clock on Tuesday night for our time of prayer together on our private Facebook group. And then on Thursday night is our midweek worship and word service at 7 o'clock right here on our main channels. We invite you uh, and encourage you to be here. Tell somebody else about it. Let's worship the Lord together. Also be watching this week for an announcement uh, in regard to our future schedule and any possible change that hopefully will be coming very, very soon. We want you to be the first to know about that and in plenty of time. I know that you're chomping at the bit. I know the rest of us are chomping at the bit as well. And we're looking forward to being together in the house of the Lord. Remember the prayer requests, things that were already spoken in this service. Uh, you can go back and scroll through the comments and see those, I'm sure. But be in prayer for all of the needs, those that are in need right now. We want to continue to be in prayer for them. We also are very excited to announce later on this afternoon we have a baptism happening at the church and possibly going to have one next week as well. We're going to be getting video footage of that to share with you so that you can rejoice in uh, folks being baptized in the wonderful name of Jesus. What a wonderful thing to happen during this time. Would you say amen? Amen. God bless you. We thank you for tuning in with us today. Go with God this week. Be, stay, be safe. Stay safe. Restaurants, as you've heard the announcement, are opening back up. Partial capacity tomorrow. Retail on Wednesday. I would encourage our church family to be smart, be mindful, re-engage in life, but just please be aware of your surroundings. God bless you in Jesus' name.